But the other thing we can do is we can add new queries to this by right mouse clicking our table adapter and adding in a new query. And this is where we can go and ask for all sorts of things, SQL statements or stored procedures. If we go SQL statements, we can ask for returning records. So we might go and suggest that maybe we want to go and get the details from a customer, but only where the customer ID equals to some sort of a parameter, a cust ID parameter. And then we can give this a name. We can fill a table. This method basically accepts a table as a parameter, and we can fill it and or we can just return a table. It doesn't matter if you do one or both, I'm just going to do one for this example, but they both would achieve the end result. So I can call this get data by customer ID. Next, finish. So what it does is it creates a new data reader under the covers that's then going to go and get the information from this select statement with any parameters of course auto-generated that we need. So we have our cust ID with the right data types. We could go and add other types of queries, such as we might want to find out how many customers are actually in the system by returning a single value. It automatically guesses that you possibly want to know what the count of the customers is as the default, so we'll use that as the default, and then we'll just call this get count. This is effectively going to become a function within our class. Under the covers, of course, it's going to go and do an execute scalar against our statement for us. And we can keep doing this for as many different types as we like. We can create very complex statements. Uh, we could go and filter any information we like. For this one, we might add one query, and then we'll finish up here, that allows us to maybe go and get all of the, uh, we'll say, where employee ID equal to employee ID. And again, we can do this item of fill by emp ID or get data by emp ID. The final thing I'm going to add in here is to allow us to get the orders for a particular customer by adding in another query, the final query, and get all of the orders where customer ID equal to cust ID. So we call this fill by cust ID and get data by cust ID. Now I want to actually start customizing the classes themselves. You can do this by right mouse clicking and actually saying view code, however it's kind of easier to actually, or maybe better in the long run, to add a brand new class, and or in fact just a code file is really what we want, a blank code file, and call this something like extended data code. Inside here we're of course going to then start create various different classes. First thing we need is a namespace, which is going to be our data access layer namespace. And then we're going to go and create a partial class, which is going to be the same name as our customers class. Actually, we'll do our data set first, Northwind DS. As soon as you do that, if you get the spelling correct, you'll see that it knows that it is the Northwind DS partial class. This will show you the other methods from the other class that's, that's inbuilt. Inside here, we can then go and create our partial class for things like our customer's data table and our partial class for our customer's row. And again, if you've got these spelt correctly, they'll show up with all of the existing method names in both objects. That's how you can really tell if you've got it spelled correctly. If you're not sure what the spelling is, go back to the designer, the code version, and look at the different options inside here. We would then perhaps do exactly the same features for our partial class, for our orders, data table, and our partial class for our orders row. The other thing we might want to do is not just these items, but we might also want to do the data adapters by going to Northwind DS Table Adapters namespace, because this is where it places in the designer, it places all of these data ad table adapters inside their own namespace called Northwind DS Table Adapters. So inside here, we'll have only two of these partial class called customers table adapter 
an orders table adapter. And again, you can see immediately that you get the, the hint that it's all correct. So the advantage of actually creating these classes now is I can now go and customize an individual customer row. And I could say, for example, uh, let's go and get back all of the orders for a particular customer. We'll call it get orders. We'll do this by creating ourselves an order, uh, an orders, sorry, a Northwind table adapter dot orders table adapter. So we'll create an adapter by instantiating it. And the adapter should have a method called get data by cust ID. Then it wants to know what the cust ID is. Now the good thing is we can just say this dot customer ID. Because we are in an actual row at the moment of the actual customer's row, we can actually get the customer ID for this row. This method here returns the right thing we want, so we simply say return. So as you can see, it's very easy to add new methods that go and allow you to pull all of this information back. And we can do similar sorts of things for other items as well. But what we'll do is we'll wait till we get to our finished version that has a lot of extra methods in here, and then we'll see the, the real advantage of this. At that stage, you're ready to compile your data access layer and make sure that it, it actually compiles okay.